Now, with less than two weeks to the elections, the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission says it is all systems go. The election body says it is ready to hold the elections and has all the necessary instruments in place for a successful exercise. Now, yesterday, the election body confirmed that the second batch of ballot papers had arrived in the country. Now, in a press briefing this morning, IEBC said they have 240,000 polling clerks who will be stationed across the country. This is in addition to 1,000 IEBC staff who will also be deployed to various centers during the elections to assist the clerks. Security, which is a crucial element of a peaceful election, has also been stepped up. According to the IEBC, 90,000 police officers have been deployed to the over 30,000 polling stations to oversee the polls. This is in addition to the election observers who have already started arriving in the country. And to further discuss this issue, I'm now joined in studio by Peter Okoth Alingo. He is the executive director of the Institute for Education in Democracy, and he'll also be part of something which we're calling the PVT. He'll be telling us what that is shortly. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you. All right. So the IEBC is saying, look, we're ready. Um, do you believe this? Uh, yes, I believe them because I've seen this. I've been part of this. I've been part of the uh, uh, preparations uh, that uh, the IEBC has been making as part of the observation process that we've been doing long term. Yeah. And, and therefore, we believe the IEBC when they say they are ready. And we want to encourage them to be, in fact, extremely very, very ready because citizens yeah. are also ready and we observers are equally ready. Okay, how do you make them very, very, very ready? More ready yes, uh, well, yes, we have to just urge them to move on because this is a national exercise. It is a very important exercise. And then we don't want to create room for anything. And therefore, readiness it means readiness. It's like getting ready for war. You know, we must get ready for it and, and, and deploy and deploy and deploy what we need and get the tools out there, the machinery, the personnel, everything that we need to get this thing going properly. Okay. Uh, yes. We'll be talking about those deployments in just a few minutes, but I know you're part of something which we're calling the PVT, the Parallel Voting Tally. Um, tell us briefly, what is it about, how did it come about, and why does it need to be there? Yes, I uh, just want to say it's called the Parallel Vote Tabulation. Tabulation. Yes, right, okay. Tabulation, PVT, that is exactly what it is. Uh, this is what uh, the Election Observation Group, which I'm part of, ELOG as you know yeah. it, and this is a, a platform for domestic observers made up of uh, organizations here, civil society, uh, faith-based organizations who are formed together as a permanent platform to observe these elections. Now, they will be doing quite a number of things, and already we've been doing some of it. The long-term observation that we've been doing for the last one year or so, right. then on election day, we will then do what we call general observation, uh, but that is what we will complement with uh, this thing called parallel vote tabulation, PVT. Now, PVT simply uh, is a methodology, you know, a technique that is used uh, in election observation, a technique that allows observers, you know, in real time to assess systematically, and the word is systematically mm -hmm. assess uh, the process on election day, uh, the quality of that process, and speak to it in real time, but also uh, be able to verify accurately the outcome All and right. the results. How are you going to verify now this the is, results? Because this, this is, is where the controversy normally comes This is in. how it will happen. Now, in uh, what we do under parallel vote tabulation, this methodology or technique, it allows us to do a projection mm -hmm. of the results so that within a margin of error that we will work with, we can for uh, 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 in definite terms tell Kenyans that the election results will fall within this margin. Now this is how it will work. We have uh, you know, professionally well trained observers that we have thoroughly trained and these ones will be deployed to polling stations. What we have done is to sample polling stations. We've done random sampling of polling stations. Out of the 33, we've randomly sampled uh, uh, some of them, ensuring that uh, we uh, remain representative of the entire country. Right. So we will post or deploy observers, these well-trained observers, to those sampled polling stations, and we will equip them with tools. That is to say, checklists that will enable them to collect information, but also a mobile phone set uh, that will enable them to text messages periodically to us. 
so that at the end of the day, during the day, they will text messages based on the checklist that uh, they will have so that this is used to, in real time, periodically assess how the process is going okay. on. And we'll speak to Kenyans. At the end of the day, they will then collect the provisional results that will be announced there. So that, that those results will be transmitted to a database that we have now in Nairobi, and we'll analyze that very carefully. And on the basis of that, do a projection that will enable us within a margin of error to tell Kenyans confidently that this is where the results will okay. fall. Do you think Kenya is ready for that? Because some people might argue that, look, this is going to be premature. It might cause a lot of heated debate, especially if the IEBC has not announced their official results. No, uh, this is something which is done in consultation with the IEBC, and it is legal. There is nothing illegal about it. it is We're not questioning the legal We're asking but, if Kenyans but, are ready for that. Look, I mean, Kenyans need something like this. This is what they need. <laughs> it is what they lacked in 2007, you know. 207, as you know, Kenyans didn't have the confidence in the election results and therefore went to the streets. And they also didn't have confidence in the courts. Mm -hmm. We are telling them that we are providing an alternative that can help them to verify the accuracy of those results. Right. In, 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 in very accurate and precise terms, we will tell Kenyans that, look, don't worry. We've watched this process for you. We are professionals. We've done this work very well and we can do it and we've done it and this is what the results look like and we will consult with the IEBC on 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 on, on a frequent constantly so that we know when to release our 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 data our results our findings our projections okay um with regard to you being an observer obviously a member of elog there have been a lot of talk about observers especially international ones being said or being accused of having of being partisan I'm not sure what your response to this is, well, and now that you're saying you're going to have provisional results. My, my response to this is that it is unfortunate that these kind of accusations are being, you know, uh, swung, uh, being floated, uh, you know, right, left and center. I think one, of, uh, one thing which people ought to understand is that observers or monitors are professional people. They do their work professionally. They are guided by a set of ethics and a code of conduct that they must abide by mm -hmm. and comply with, which they sign. They also sign a, a code of conduct that is given by the IEBC. So law requires that observers undertake their work objectively, professionally, in a non-partisan manner and in an, in an impartial manner. That word is difficult, but <laughs> that is it. So our observers therefore know what they do they know how they do it, they know why they do it. And therefore, they are not people who will take sides. And that is not just about international observers. It's also about domestic observers as ourselves. International observers are guided by uh, the Declaration of Principles for International Observation. Mm -hmm. Domestic observers like ourselves are also guided by a Declaration of Global Principles for domestic non-partisan observers. So there is a set of principles a set of guidelines, a set of code of conduct, a clear uh, set of ethics that we as observers abide by and comply by. And we do our work with utmost objectivity and accuracy. And that is what we do. All right. Peter Okothalingo, the executive director of IED, or Institute for Education in Democracy, also a member of ELOG, and now he tells us that they're going to have something which they're calling the PVT, the Parallel Vote Tabulation, Correct. which for the first time is going to give Kenyans what we're calling a projection of where the election is likely to form, who is likely to emerge winner in this election. So I'm sure we'll be interrogating this issue a lot more in the coming um, days and obviously in our subsequent bulletins so do stay tuned and keep an eye out for that